What's up, y'all? Welcome back in the shop. I should be sandblasting on my Airstream trailer, but uh, sandblasting is boring and monotonous, so uh, I'm pushing it to the back burner when I probably should be doing it as a priority. But anyway, what we're working on today is we're working on doing the lift kit. That's the downside of having the air compressor in the shop. Anyway, what we're working on is doing the mounting for the axles. Uh, I did get them in last week. Uh, they are perfectly to the dimensions that I specified that I sent to Dexter to have them build them to. Really happy about that. All of my drums and brakes fit on like a charm. It's great. So we're gonna be working on drilling all the holes and mounting the axles, but more so the shock brackets since I'm gonna be modifying them because I have the, the lift is creating an issue with the angle and everything. So I'll show you all what we got going. I already drilled all the holes for the actual mounting of the axles, and I'll show you how I did that too. But uh, I did not record that, so you'll just have to imagine that, and I'll show you how I measured it out and stuff too, just so you can get a good idea. But uh, let's get into it here, and I'll show you what we got going. All right, so they're in place right now. Uh, I do have the bolts. You can kind of see the bolts there. They're not tightened. They're more just hand tightened or to hit them with this power ratchet. But uh, they're all in place. Uh, I did not show you all this box. So this is my battery compartment box. Uh, I wanted to put it directly in between the axles or close to the center of the trailer just for the weight aspect. I didn't want to throw the trailer all off balance. Being as the batteries are only about 40 pounds a piece times three or four not significant and I probably could have got away with putting it just about anywhere but uh, this is what I ended up doing uh, all this is is an aluminum toolbox that uh, is originally off a of, or made to fit a Ford Ranger the width is pretty much already the way I needed it to all I had to do is cut I cut probably four inches off and bent this down Weather those cross members in and weather the cross member in the bottom just to keep the bottom from bowing down. And uh, all that. I did have to cut about an inch off each side. This piece. So what I did is when I cut it, I just took the top lip uh, extra piece I cut off and modified that and then dropped it down and welded it back to it. You can kind of see some of my ugly looking spool gun welds. I am not the greatest with it, but more so the problem is it's not designed to weld this thin a material and uh, it kept burning through, having a lot of trouble that way. But anyway, it came together all right, pretty happy with it. So this square section right here is going to be directly in the middle of the hall, going down the center of the trailer or a little bit off to one side, I guess because of the shower and stuff being wider on one side. Uh, I'm going to make just a trap door of some type right in the middle of the hall. You'll be able to pull it up and access all the batteries. The four batteries will be on this end. All the electrical stuff and everything else will be on that end. That's kind of how that's going to work. But at any rate, axles are mounted. I did, basically they're mounted directly center where the old ones were. They're just dropped down three inches because I have the angle iron that doubles as rear structure support and also the three inch lift. Uh, 10 degree axles, I've been told by several people the originals were supposed to be 22 and a half. But as you can see, there's the original. Granted, it is worn some, but uh, I don't know. You look at it, I guess the square is not quite aligned like that one is. So it probably was originally 22 and a half. That's what I've been told by several different people that this trailer originally came with. But uh, I went with 10 degrees. That way, I knew how much higher I wanted it lifted versus how it sat before. And I'm going to be gaining probably about 4 inches. So that'll be almost perfect for what I'm doing. Uh, you can see I just drilled. Got two bolts on each side. I just measured it out. I mean, that's general. Anyone can figure that out. Measured it evenly spaced it and drilled the holes on each side just to five eighths holes five eighths bolts all that good stuff so what we're going to be working on is cutting these shock brackets and uh i have my pattern up here i made 
Uh, what I'm gonna do, so originally the shock would have been at a slight upwards angle, but I probably wouldn't really have to modify them that much, but I'm trying to get a little more travel as far as how the angle pushes it. I'm trying to move the center to center measurement here, make it a little bit greater, so go up a little bit. And I'm also trying to make the shot clear this back bolt because when you drop it down, instead of being up here, it's down three inches. It's pretty close to that bolt. So this is what I came up with, this little pattern. You can see just kind of templates like that. So basically that's what I'm gonna cut the difference is. And it's gonna be welded just like that. So I messed it all out the other day, spent a little time making sure it was gonna be right. So uh, we're gonna get these cut off and uh, we'll go from there. I think what I'm gonna do is take a garden hose and get a small trickle of water and trickle it over top of this section while I weld right here because I don't want this to get too hot because it's got the rubber cords in it. Just a little bit precaution. I may even let it cool in between welds as I weld one side, let it cool 30 minutes or so and then weld the other side. We'll see. I don't wanna, definitely don't wanna get the cold water on the weld directly after I weld it, so. We're gonna get these cut off and uh, get this pulled outside. I'll have to throw the two tires back on, still have the drums in the center. That's why this old axle is still mounted here. But uh, we'll throw them on and roll that side and work on getting these welded up and all that. So I'm gonna try to make it where I can put the shocks on when the axles are mounted. Previously with these, you couldn't because they're too close. See, there's not a big enough of a gap. I think I can bring them back like this and maybe just bend this a little bit to kind of match the angle of the shock. And I do have brand new shocks. Monroe, Magnum. Should be pretty good ones. So we're gonna get work on cutting these and uh, I'll show you once I get these cut off, I'll show you what they look like. And there's how it's gonna fit on, just like that. That's what it's gonna look like when it's all done. It's just clamped right now, I haven't welded it or anything. It's just slight angle. I think I'm gonna take this and just twist it just a little bit, just to kind of match the angle of the shock and uh, you can get it on and off without too much trouble, without taking the axle off which is something that wasn't able to be done before. So we're gonna get this tacked in place and weld it up. You have to pull it outside so we can run a little water on it, keep it cool. But uh, let's get into that. I gave up the idea of using water just because it doesn't put out near enough heat to even worry about. It's still cold here in the center. A little bit of warmth there. I'm just going to let it cool in between welds and it'll be perfectly fine. So there you go. Much to my calculations, you can weld them on all day long as long as you do it with a smaller welder and uh, don't do both passes at the same time. It'll be fine. 
All right, we got it all done. Axles are mounted. Shock brackets are all welded in place. Uh, I have yet to put on the shocks just because these axles are actually going to come back off. At least the rear one is and the front one's going to be slid back so I don't tear it all up with the sandblaster. I just wanted to make sure that all the mounting and everything was right. All the holes were in the proper places. Everything was going to work. That way I can sandblast it and paint it and don't worry about having to modify things later. So we got all that accomplished. You can see how I, I don't know if you can see there or not. Let me shine it on here with a flashlight. See how we twisted the shock bracket just a little bit to accommodate for the angle of the shock. And there's enough of a gap between there that you can take it on and off easily without ever removing the axle or the tire or anything, which that was the goal. There's a slight angle, but that'll be okay. It's gonna work out nice. I got the drums. Should have left one of the tires off. I got the drums all on and painted. I painted them with some high temp, uh, thousand degree paint. Maybe they won't get too hot and burn the paint off and start rusting too quick. Uh, in here, see I added 45s, or whatever you want to call them, where each axle goes. Two per side, per axle. That just structures the, beefs up the angle iron a little bit, so there's no chance I would ever trying to fold upwards. Not that it really could anyway, because the axle's hooked to it and bolted to it, but I just like to be sure. And uh, I added the same thing on this side. It's gonna work out nice. Bolts are, couldn't be any closer, but uh, actually the, the, it keeps the nut from, nut on the bottom bolt from turning. That's what I'm trying to say. So I'm gonna put the lock washer on the head of the bolt run it up the nut can never unscrew because it's touching this other nut so that'll work out nice everything's coming together pretty good i'm happy with how it's coming together honestly went together easier than i thought it would but uh that's pretty much it for this video next time around i think we're gonna be i'm probably not gonna record the sandblasting because that's gonna be <laughs> a lot of time but uh i'll do some increments and this and that and paint prep and all that good stuff but uh i don't know when the next video is going to be it's going to take a little bit of man hours to finish up what i got here before i can actually get some good content created but uh any rate that's the mounting of the axles with the three inch lift you could do it so many different ways this is just the way i chose to do it with what i had to work with and uh in my eyes, it's probably the best way, but that's how that is. You, there's so many other ways to do it. So That pretty much sums it up for this video. Appreciate you watching all the way through. I hope you learned something, and I hope you stay tuned for all the other videos on the Airstream and all the other stuff I got going. Uh, if you like what I got going here, and uh, if you like this video, hit the thumbs up. And uh, subscribe to the channel if you're on YouTube and follow if you're on Facebook and all that good stuff. Uh, I hope to see you next time around every two weeks, uh, every Friday. So uh, stay tuned, stay creative, until next time.